Okay, hey guys, welcome to the Hudson Woodworking Shop. Uh, the title of this video is a little bit out of character for our videos, but I'm thinking we're gonna start switching to more of a vlog style and you know share some more information this way. Anyways, uh, all that aside, C Channel ripped my table in half, and that seems like kind of a dramatic um, entrance to this uh, video and title, but it's true. Like. As you can see, this table has been ripped in half. And uh, how that happened, we'll get into it. And why it happened, we'll get into. Uh, but I thought we'd start with uh, you know a little story and background on the table. And then uh, I'll explain why I think it happened and how I'm going to prevent it from happening in the future. Okay, so for a little context, um, this table uh, was one of the first project products that we actually made when we became a company. Um, it's a live edge panel product, which is what we call um, our tables that are made of a live edge on the outside. Not sure if that's been shot, uh, but it's actually made of sections to get the width that you want. Um, and yeah, the uh, buyer or client was a good buddy of mine uh, from university. We played football together. Um, we both had a lot of concussion issues actually in university during football. So, uh, you know, we had a lot in common and uh, I was really thrilled when he reached out and asked, uh, for me to build him a table. So um, the table construction went well for the most part, um, but uh, what I put in here was these C channels, which are pretty standard. Um, uh, at the time I was putting them in most of my tables. Now we just kind of put them in live edge slabs. Um, what they do for those of you that don't know is they help keep the table flat as it moves because for those of you that don't know, uh, wood actually moves, even though it's dead, it's still kind of alive. Um, it shrinks and contracts through the seasons as humidity and temperature changes. So, um, I guess my buddy, uh, you know, the table, you know, they loved the table at first, the table and bench, uh, it was a gift to his wife. And, um, yeah, so at first it just kind of started with a small little crack and he had reached out to me, um, saying that there was a little cracking and, uh, you know, I told him right away, you know, we could fix it. Uh, you know, I'm sorry it happened. And, uh, you know, we'll make it right. And uh, he decided, uh, you know, it worked better for him to bring it by in spring um, and we'd resolve the problem then. And then fast forward um, a couple months, a few months, uh, he comes to me and says, uh, well, do I got a story for you? And I heard a uh, thought in my mind, uh oh, like what happened? <laughs> so kind of how the story goes is uh, he was sleeping um, after working. I think it was a night shift he worked and uh, he was really tired, a little delusional, and in the middle of the night, they heard a massive snap. And um, they thought someone had broken into the, the house. So Matt's a big guy, uh, he went down to check it out, and um, he couldn't find anything. He was a little delusional because he hadn't had much sleep, uh, but it seemed like everything was all right. Uh, no one had broken in. They thought they'd figure it out in the morning. So uh, goes back to bed, falls asleep, uh, come morning, uh, he's sitting at the table. He said he's a little delusional, kind of nodding in and out from not getting much sleep. And um, he looks down on the table and sees there's some potting soil from one of the pot, the plants that are on the table on the table. And he couldn't figure out how it got from the pot down on the table. And then he looked down at the table and saw that the table had split in half entirely. And uh, it made sense to him at that point, you know. Uh, what the noise was so he looked around and he ended up finding a couple pieces from the table on the ground uh some screw heads and uh yeah the table essentially ripped apart in the middle of the night and um yeah made a big loud noise as you can imagine it would and i'm gonna next show you uh why i believe that happened and you know how we can resolve that from happening in the future okay so here's the table and here's the crack um, for reference, it's about three eighths of an inch, almost half an inch at its bigger side, and it gets a little smaller down at the end. Uh, so usually when a table cracks, basically what happens is, um, tension in the table, um, contracts on one side and maybe on the other and expands and it kind of banana peels open like this type of motion. And uh, initially when I looked at it, I realized there's no point at which the wood down here could have, you know, 
it, it basically it cracked right through. It's this is not indicative of if that's even a word. Indicative, that's the word I'm looking for, of that type of crack. So um after some more research, we're just kind of fuzzing around, I noticed that um you know this screw head had popped off and uh my buddy had mentioned that he'd found this screw head on the ground. And um also he had given me one of these bolts that he had pulled out and it was bent. And um, on top of that, the uh, threaded inserts here, used to holding the legs, are mostly all right. But on the outsides, on almost every one, every leg, they are skewed outside and cracked. Same on this side, not as bad, still done. And this one's almost pulled out a little. Same on this one, tilted out. So what I believe happened is, you know, when we put in this C channel, um, I oversized the holes and um, only tightened the middle as tight as I can. I tightened the rest and I backed them out to allow for some movement. Some movement. Not three eighths of an inch of movement. So, what happened here is the holes maxed out, I guess. And as the table contracted after probably expanding, um, basically it, you know, it's held tight here and it's held tight here and it's contracting in between and it pulled apart which seems crazy that there's that much movement in the wood but you know that's what i've concluded so it's pretty wild um but there is an easy way to not you know have this issue happen again and i'm gonna get into that now okay so ultimately Using C-channel like this is a no-go. And the reason I built my C-channel like this when I first started is because that's what I'd seen everyone else kind of doing. And um, the reason why I'm making this video is to show people not to do it this way. Um, usually you don't like to highlight your mistakes, but this is a learning lesson for a lot of people. You cannot expect C-channel like this, or even legs that don't have slotted inserts, uh, to perform well over the years and in different environments. Yes. You might get away with it yes i have lots of tables that were done like this and i haven't had any issues with them but this one did rip apart um so the solution is to use c channel with slots in it so um, that's a bit more difficult for me to do i just have a small wood shop here we just have a small wood shop and uh, drilling metal is fine but milling metal is a different procedure um, you can drill a couple holes and then file it out but at that point the amount of time it's taken me to make these um, c channels is um, more expensive than just buying a product. So basically, um, Legacy Lumber, I believe, is one who makes these, but you can buy them at Concept 13, which is in Mississauga. Um, and I do believe they ship for those of you in other places in Canada and the USA. You're gonna have to find your own suppliers if you're watching from there. But um, basically they sell pre-made uh, slotted C-channel. And there are other distributors, I'm sure they're out there. I'm just mentioning these guys because the owner uh, Rob is a pretty straight up guy, um, dealt with him a few times and um, if you guys can help give him some business, they're you know small local uh, woodworking supply business so uh, I'm sure he'd appreciate it and uh, that's where I plan on getting my C channels in the future. So uh, yeah, they sell them in pre-cut sizes and if they're not the right size, I can just modify them from then. So basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use slotted C channel and I'm going to continue to keep this tight but I'm going to consider also using um, bolt instead of screws uh, for holding the rest in with threaded inserts and backing these guys out more on the outsides for allow make sure that um, these bolts or screws don't bind on the slots and they have lots of room to play the other thing is a lot of tables or a lot of table legs with the standard metal leg these were like a classic x-frame metal leg I have them custom fabbed from a guy in Mississauga and he does amazing work but um, all the holes are just drilled in and um, that can also cause some issues. As we can see, it wasn't as big a deal, uh, but the threaded inserts actually got kind of ripped out and uh, you know spotted. So if it wasn't for just the C-channel here, uh, I'm sure the damage would have been more either here or on the metal legs. So um, look for metal legs with slotted inserts, especially if they're expanding across the width. And um, yeah, I'm gonna see if the guy can fab them like that from now on because uh, you know this is obviously an issue and uh, I don't want this type of stuff to happen with our products. So yeah, moral of the story is, you know, wood movement is real. A lot of people don't believe in it. Um, and it does affect your furniture. 
Um, and if you don't respect it, it can bite you in the ass. So it's not a big deal, but you just have to be aware of it and uh, yeah, you know, plan for it. So I hope this video helps some of you that, um, you know, have been using G-Channel like this, like I see a lot of other people do it and uh, maybe deters you to do it in a different way or just buying it. And uh, yeah, so if you have any uh, more questions or concerns on, you know, the C channel or anything I didn't cover, if anything doesn't make sense, you know, uh, comment down below and I'd be happy to ask any comment I get, I'll definitely reply to. Um, for those of you um, that are returning from other videos, um, we'd always love your feedback on these videos and uh, thanks for the support. And for everyone in general, if you could like this video, if you enjoyed it, that helps us out a lot as well as subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, it'll let you know when we have more videos. So we have a lot more videos kind of like this planned. Uh, we had an epoxy incident recently actually too that we plan to cover, uh, just kind of give you tips. And we also do uh, some build videos. So uh, stay tuned for more. I hope to see you guys again and uh, take care.